<coughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, hearty welcome to this, our program, Daily Walk with Mary. Today we have a very special title for Our Lady. Our Lady of the Slain, Lorban, Portugal. Our Lady of the Slain, it might seem strange, but there is a title like that, and she is honored in a special way. Our Lady of the Slain, also known as our Lady of the Murdered. It is located at the Cistercian Monastery in Sesia, Seika, near Lorban, in the country of Portugal. Our Lady of the Slain, or Our Lady of the Murdered. It is piously believed that this image was brought directly from heaven to be given to the Albert John, who was the uncle of King Alonso, Afonso of Portugal. So the pious belief is that this statue was brought from heaven itself, directly from heaven. And it was given to the abbot of the Cistercian Monastery. The statue earned its unique title through many spectacular miracles. Many very unimaginable miracles have taken place. With, in connection with this statue of Our Lady. The statue earned its unique title through many spectacular miracles. It is best known for the fact that life was restored to several persons who had been murdered. That is why it is called the Our Lady of Sulay. Our Lady of the Murdered, because many who have lost their lives through being murdered, they were brought back to life through the intercession of Our Lady when invoked in this statue. It is best known for the fact that life was restored to several persons who had been murdered. Interestingly, in memory of these miracles, those who had been raised from the dead would bear from that time forward a red mark upon their throats. So those who were murdered, those who were slaughtered, when they are raised up, they come to life fully. They begin to live the normal life, but they will have a red mark on the throat. That is a permanent reminder that they were once murdered. And strange, like that which was then seen, on the throat of the image. So on the statue of Our Lady also, there was a mark on the throat. So the both, the recipients of the miracle, those who raised from the dead, had their red mark on the throat, as well as on the statue, which gave life to the murdered. There was a red mark on the statue, on the throat. This information comes to us from the Cistercian Chronicles. So this it is belonging to the Cistercian order. 
and in the sixties in chronicles these things are mentioned clearly written as uh, events that really took place king afonso first the conqueror also known as known as afonso henrix was the first king of portugal and a lifelong son opponent of islam he spent 46 years as king of portugal waging war against the moors in order to drive the invaders from his land so all throughout this kingship he was king for 46 years and all these years he had to be in constant battle against the moors he was also known for his piety and great love for god a relative of saint bernard of clairvaux and a great saint and he was also the abbot of the cistercian monastery a relative of saint bernard of clairvaux he bestowed many privileges and benefits to the religious orders and built alcobaca monastery for the cistercian order so the king was showing so much favor to the cistercian order as well as to other religious congregations he was responsible for the foundation of several monasteries and convents and was favorable especially toward the cistercians so he was helping not only the cistercians several other religious congregations too our lady of the uh, king alfonso was not a stranger to the miraculous before the battle of aurik when afonso was to meet in battle and overwhelming army of five moorish kings he prayed that god would give them give him the strength to defeat his enemies so there were a union of five kings moorish kings they joined together and they were preparing to wage war against this newly founded kingdom of portugal king afonso first he prayed that god would give him the strength to defeat his enemies because they were gathering forces such in a such big scale because five things coming together pulling together all the uh, all the soldiers and so it was going to be a tremendous fight he fell asleep and in his dream a mysterious old man entered his tent to advise him that it was god's will that he would be victorious in the coming engagement against the moors so he was given a surety a promise that he would surely win even though the enemies that is coming against him is so well equipped and so large and a combat uh, his son's army would have been almost insignificant compared to them but still god gives him a promise that he would win the war victorious in the coming engagement against the moors afterward he was awakened by his god 
who told him there was an old man waiting outside who wished to speak to him. So after this dream, in the dream he sees an old man who is giving this promise and then when the dream was over, his own guard comes and informs him that an old, an old man is waiting outside who wished to speak to the king. King Afonso bade him enter and he was startled to see it was the old man from his dream. So this guard comes and tells him there is an old man waiting and he, when he is allowed to enter in, he is to his great surprise, he sees that it was the same old man who was speaking to him in the dream. The old man said, Afonso, have confidence because he will conquer and destroy these infidel kings. He will smash their power and the Lord will appear to you. So a great promise that the Lord himself is going to appear to him. He then instructed the king to leave the camp that night without any attendant. At the sound of the church bell ringing from the old man's hermitage. So he was he is asked to go in the middle of the night alone, unaccompanied by anyone else. It was dark and the night seemed ominous and strangely vacant when King Afonso heard the mournful toll of the bell. He took up his sword and shield and mounted his horse to ride alone from the camp. A heavy cloud cover blotted out the light of the moon and the stars when suddenly an intense beam of light illuminated the night from the east. There was moonlight, there was light from the stars, but suddenly all this was totally covered by a thick cover of cloud. And it was so thick darkness everywhere. And then in the darkness suddenly uh, from the east comes a powerful beam of light, a very powerful light. An intense beam of light illuminated the night from the east. And in this splend, splend, resplendent light, a cross appeared bearing the crucified Christ. So there was a wonderful luminous shining cross was appearing to him on the sky with Jesus hanging on the cross. <clears throat> King Alfonso dismounted from the horse and prostrated himself before the image of the King of Kings. When he heard a voice telling him that he would indeed be victorious against the Moors. So thus it was a, a wonderfully miraculous sight. The powerful light, the cross, Jesus hanging in the cross, and the words coming to him from the cross. Trusting in God, King Afonso went into battle, won an Im impressive victory against the five kings. It is said that St. James also appeared during the battle to guarantee the victory of the Christian army. King Afonso went on to win other great battles against the Moors. 
doubling the size of the kingdom of Portugal that he had founded. So the Portugal, uh, Portugal itself was founded by King Afonso and through these battles he doubled the size of the country. He was winning victory after victory and he was adding other neighboring countries to his nation, to Portugal. Thus we have the great victory as promised by God. Because he was a man who was of prayer, much devotion to Our Lady, and it was trusting in God, trusting in Jesus, and trusting in Our Lady that he was going for the war. And that brought him victory after victory. And thus he became truly a victorious king for all throughout the years. Though it was so battle he had experienced, it was victorious battles. And he really added much to his own country through his battles. So here we have a mother who is victorious and adding victory to victory all those who entrust themselves to her, her protection and her maternal love. Let us also offer our own selves to Our Lady's maternal protection and ask for her intercession, her blessing. May the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit bless every one of us through the most powerful intercession of our Blessed Mother. <laughs>